How do you do, my friends everywhere, boys and girls and ladies and gentlemen and men and women and people? I am Professor Julius Sumner Miller, and physics is my business, and today, as before, we are talking about the Bernoulli Principle. Consider the following. I have here two croquet balls, which are pretty heavy, and they are separated by some little space here, which space, when viewed against the larger free space, may be considered a constriction. So, here is one, there is the other, there are the strings which support them, and I'm going to blow a smart stream of air between them. And what will we see? The pressure in this fast fluid flow, notice that beautiful alliteration, fast fluid flow, the pressure suffers a reduction, whereupon, as some have said, they will be sucked together. Oh, what wound to my injured heart, sucked together. No, the pressure will be less, and they will be pushed together from the outside. Let me show you that. I have a stream of air delivered to me by a pump producing compressed air. Here I'm going to hold them quietly, if I can, and blow a stream of air between. Oh, I blew one a little sideways. I'll try it again. There they are. They were pushed together. They were pushed together. I can show it to you on a more elementary scale. Here are two ping pong balls supported on light strings. And here is a tube which allows me to blow air from this up between them. Watch how they are brought together by the push of the air on the outside. They are brought together. The pressure between them is diminished. Watch it again. There you are. Now, further to our matter, I'm just putting this out of our way. Consider the following. Consider the following. I must tell you about the chimney effect. And uh, this needs a little story, which I trust will enchant you. Now, it may take me a little time to tell the story, but it is a necessary uh, accessory to our uh, uh, problems. You are to imagine that my neighbor lives here, and I live here. See, a little uh, higher status, a little higher status. So one day, there came a knock at my door, and I was back here in my study studying, and I went to the front door, and it was my neighbor, and I opened the door, and she stood beside me, and she said, Professor, do you have a fireplace? And I said, I, indeed I do. She said, does your fireplace smoke? I said, indeed it does not. She said, why not? And I said, it resides in the house of a physicist. Oh, she said, that may be true, but your doorbell does not work. <laughs> that was wonderful. Whereupon I replied with uh, some rather firmness, I don't have my doorbell work, my dear lady, because I do not wish to be bothered by people like this. But I said, what can I do for you? She said her fireplace smoked. Whereupon, I went down here on the lower street, and I showed her that her chimney is less high than mine, and the wind velocity across hers is less than mine, and therefore the pressure is not suffering enough reduction here as it does in mine, and my fireplace has a good draft, and hers does not. Whereupon, she said, what shall I do to rectify this matter? I said, have more chimney put on, which she did, and now her fireplace does not smoke. And I will show you my fireplace and my chimney. Here is the fireplace, here is the chimney. I'm going to blow a sharp stream of air across, and notice, notice the beautiful draft my chimney has. Oh, of course it does. And I shall see you once again. I regret the little disaster with the flag, and we will make it flutter prettily as it should. And I thank you for watching.